What are the four main pillars of object-oriented programming? Well, my name is Rishi Ramju and welcome to the Backbench Engineering Community where I make engineering easy for you. So let us ask ourselves that obvious question. What are the four main pillars of object-oriented programming? Well, let's find out. So the first main pillar of object-oriented programming is encapsulation. So encapsulation is a process by which similar functions and similar variables are grouped into one single entity like this. So here related functions and variables are grouped into a single entity which is referred to as an object. Here this is what you refer to as a method and this variable is called the property of this particular object. So this is what you refer to as encapsulation that is binding up of data and functions into a single unit is what you refer to as encapsulation. So here the interesting fact is that this particular variable is not accessible outside this object that is this particular function f2 cannot access this particular variable. This particular variable is only available Available to this particular function with which it is binded to. This simple process of binding up related functions and variables is what you refer to as encapsulation. That is the first pillar of object oriented programming. Now we have the second pillar of object oriented programming which is referred to as abstraction. So abstraction is the process of representing only the essential features by hiding the background process or, or background functions. For example, let me make that simple for you. When we are driving a car, we know for a fact that in order to increase the speed, we need to increase the accelerator of a car. But all we do is we all we do is we just increase the accelerator of the car. We have no idea what all are the functions that happens after we press the accelerator. That is the engine speed starts increasing and this speed is given to the wheels and the wheels start increasing. But all those are hidden from us. We are not seeing this. The only thing that we know is that we have to press the accelerator pedal. So therefore only the essential thing is being shown to us press the accelerator pedal to increase the speed. We don't have to be bothered about how the engine performs or how the engine increases the speed or how it is transmitted to the wheels. All those are hidden from us. So therefore representing only the essential data for us and hiding the background details is what you refer to as data abstraction. So therefore in the case of a particular object like this let us assume certain functions say f1, f2, f3, f4, like this and let us assume a few variables as x, y, z, p, q. So let us assume that only f1 and f2 are the essential features that needs to be shown to the user. So these are the essential features that are shown to the user. Rest all the data be it all these functions and these variables they are hidden from the particular user. So therefore this is the process of data abstraction. So here only these two functions are visible to the user. So therefore the major advantage of doing this is that it makes the user interface more simpler and easier to understand. So therefore all these things are not visible to the user. The user only sees these two functions. Maybe this function might be on and off. So the user knows that if I press this button it will something will be on or if I press this button the function is to turn off. That is the only thing that is shown to the user. The user does not have to worry about what all things happens when we press this function, what all things are present here. That doesn't matter for the user. So therefore, a simple added advantage is that whatever changes that we make here does not create a change over here. That is, the user will not know if we are making any changes in the hidden functions or hidden variables. So we can create changes here without affecting the main user interface. That is a major advantage of using data abstraction. So that is in the case of your mobile phones, your mobile phones, the Android phones and the iOS phones, they'll get updates. So while your phone is getting updated and while you install the latest update, when you look at the user interface, it would look the same as it was before. Maybe some minor changes for the wallpaper, but that's it. It's, it's the exact same thing that it was before. But the things that change are what was inside the Android operating system, which is not shown to you, which you have no access to. Those are the things that get changed. That is the hidden things are those that get changed in the case of an update. So that is what you refer to as data abstraction. Next we have what we refer to as inheritance. So inheritance is a property by which objects of one particular class 
acquire the properties of objects of another class as simple as that so therefore this reduces the redundancy of code that is we don't have to keep on writing the same code and again and again we can inherit a particular feature from another object of another class that is what you refer to as inheritance so let me make that concept simple for you the company maruti suzuki so maruti suzuki has a lot of cars beleno swift vetara brazza sia so it has got a lot of cars but all these cars inherit the same engine they all have the same engine so maruti suzuki does not have to create individual engines for each of these car rather all these car are inherited with the same engine so therefore when you have all these four cars that is a beleno a swift a vetara bus and a cs and if you open the bonnet of all the four cars you can see that they all these four cars have the same diesel engine which is a 1.3 ddi is fiat sourced engine so So they all have the same engine inside these cars. So therefore, the same engine is inherited onto it. Therefore, reducing the need for creating different engines for each of these cars. Well, similarly, in the case of inheritance, objects of a particular one class will acquire the properties of objects from another class. As simple as that. That is what you refer to as inheritance. And lastly, we have what you refer to as polymorphism so polymorphism so from here poly means many and morphism means forms so polymorphism means many forms that is it can acquire many forms so it is the ability of a function to take more than one form let me simplify that for you so in our cars we have an accelerator pedal so when we put the car in the forward gear and when we hit the accelerator pedal the car moves forward so now the function of the accelerator is for the car to move forward but now when we put the reverse gear and now when we put the accelerator the car moves backward so the same accelerator is performing two different functions one is for the car to move forward and the other one is for the car to move backward here we don't have two accelerator pedals for moving forward and backward the same accelerator pedal is used for the purpose of the motion towards the front and towards the back what it depends is on which gear your car is put into so that gear is the parameter that defines what function this particular accelerator does as simple as that so simply a process by which a function can have many forms is referred to as polymorphism as simple as that guys as simple as that so these thus are the four main pillars of object oriented programming as simple as that so now let us see the advantages of having each of these one encapsulation that is binding up of functions and variables into each other so if we can bind functions and variables into each other it reduces the complexity of the code and it also increases the reusability of this particular object so that is advantage of having encapsulation next is data abstraction that is representing only essential features by hiding the background tasks so data abstraction also reduces the complexity of a code and it also isolates the impacts that might be created if we create certain changes in the code so that is also isolated with the help of data abstraction next we have inheritance so with the help of inheritance we can eliminate redundant writing of code that is the particular function or the particular properties of one particular object of a class can be acquired onto another object so therefore we don't have to keep on writing redundant code that can be eliminated by using inheritance and lastly we have polymorphism which is the act in which one function can perform multiple tasks so therefore we can reuse the same function for different purposes so these thus are the four main pillars of object oriented programming and the benefits or the advantages of using object oriented programming as simple as that guys so i hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what the four main pillars of object oriented programming are and if you guys found this video informative do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button we'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos so stay tuned stay subscribed until next time i'll see you guys in the next video thank you